Okay, we've finished coding our uh, light sensitive sensor and now we need to code our sound sensitive night light. So in order to do that, we will create a new sketch. So we'll hit uh, click on sketchbook there, we'll open a new sketch and again we start in a similar manner to what we had before with our set up and our loop in place for us. Looking at your board, you should see that it looks pretty similar to what you just did before in that we, uh, when we set things up, we've got, we'll start here in our comments by we'll just make a note of which sketches we're working on. And then up here, we need to let it know, we're gonna define some variables that identify the pins that we are hooked up to. So just like last time, we've got our three LED pins on seven, eight, and nine. And this time we're not using an analog sensor. We're gonna use a digital sensor for our uh, microphone, which means that it's going to only recognize when it hears a sound rather than uh, the level of that sound. So when we built the board, we uh, fiddled with the potentiometer on the board in order to get it to light up uh, when, only when it heard a noise. And so <coughs> you can fiddle some more with that potentiometer, change that value to get it to be more or less sensitive to noise, and therefore uh, more or less sensitive to turning on or off your nightlight. Um, but all we're going to do is get use a digital pin um, here to read whether or not a noise has occurred. And that is hooked up in pin 2, so we'll define that. Okay. And again, just like last time, we have um, three output pins. And we'll have one input pin for our sound. Oops. So, so far, this looks a lot like what we did the last time. Um, with the exception of the analog versus digital pen. Also notice this time we don't need to worry about the serial, turning the serial monitor on. And the reason why is because we're just getting high or low values on that sensor pin rather than numerical values that can vary across a range. Uh, it's, it's not going to give us any more information to turn that on. So we will skip that step and we'll go down here to our loop and we'll think about what it is we need to have happen. So the first thing we have to do is we have to determine if a sound has been made. And then, once we've done that, if a sound is heard and the lights are currently off, turn them on. And let's be a little more accurate and refer to them as LEDs. And if a sound is heard and the LEDs are on, turn them off. So we're just going to reverse. Clap your hands or shout near the microphone or otherwise make a noise. And if the light's on, if the night light's on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on. And that's all that we need to have happen here. So let's think about how we might go ahead and write some code that our compiler can understand now that we've determined what makes sense to us. So determine if a sound has been made. Well, that means we need to uh, read our, our input pin and determine if it's high for a sound being made or low for it's pretty quiet. So we will use uh, 
Similar to what we did before, we're going to define a new variable. We'll call it sound, and that's going to be the digital read. So again, a higher low reading from our sensor pin. Okay. The other thing we have to do here is determine our um, LEDs on or off. So since they're all functioning the same here, we're turning either all of three of them on or all three of them off. We just need to read one of them in order to do that. So we're gonna make an, uh, another variable called light. We're gonna let that be a digital read of our uh, first LED pin. The reason those are defined as integers is because uh, it will read them as a one for high and a zero for low. So they actually are numbers when they are, are coming in, uh, high being one and, and low being zero. Um, or you can think of it also as a Boolean, uh, with true matching to one and false matching to zero. So we can use an integer there. And now we've read, have we heard a sound? Are our lights on? Now we respond to those, so we say that if um, our sound value is high, so we're going to use a um, double equals there for the Boolean equals. So if the sound value is high and the light value is high so this is whoops we're doing off first so that's low if we heard a sound and the lights are off that's our boolean statement true false statement uh, then we know we need some behavior here what do we do well in that case we turn all our lights on they were off when we read them, so now we're going to turn them on. Then we need down here our else if statement. What do we do in the other case? And so that's when we've heard a sound, but the lights are already on. In that case, whoops, I put a low here. I need to switch that back to a high to turn all three on. And then in this case, I'm just going to copy that, paste it down here, and switch these high values to low. Now, in this particular instance, we don't need an else if. We don't need to tell it what to do in the third case because if or in the other case, because if neither one of these are true, what we want it to do is nothing. We want it to just leave it alone. If it's quiet in the room, we haven't made a sound that's large enough for our microphone to register it, do nothing. So we don't have to tell it that, we just leave that, leave that alone, this is sufficient. And so we are now ready to first verify our code. Actually, let's go ahead and share it. Let's save it. So I'm going to save this as on, clap off, and now we can verify, again looking for any mistakes we might have made while we were typing it out, how many, so we can upload it to our board. Once you do that, you should be able to make a pretty loud noise near your sound sensor and get the lights to turn on and off in response to it. And again, you can use the screwdriver that came in your kit, you can fiddle with that potentiometer, and you can adjust the level at which it responds to the sound in order to 
uh, make it more accurate so that it uh, responds to the level of noise that is suitable for your purposes. And that should do it.